So I reckon that in many respects social is the new green. Look at these words which we're hearing frequently around us now all the time. Social capital is the oldest one and that's Robert Putnam. Problem is some financiers are now taking that and applying it to money. <laughs> it's like the word sustainable, which started in the environment movement, and now it's about meeting your financial bottom line. It's really hard to keep some ownership over words, but I do try. And so I have asked, you'll see in one of my slides, which comes from a consortia, um, which is a, an idea I'd like to suggest to you later on. They use the word social capital notes, and I'm going to ask them to change that. So social capital, I mean the Robert Putnam, the bonds, the community bonds, the intangible uh, connectedness that's worth something that we built. Uh, social enterprises and social businesses, there's a slight difference uh, in them. Um, but it doesn't matter, they have the same, and I'll explain that to you, but they have the same purpose, which is to create social value, not just financial value. Uh, social investment is also sometimes talked about as social finance um, and there's a continuum of kinds of um, <coughs> money sources that fit into the social investment sphere. Social value creation, now that's the new kid on the block. Although you've always done it, it's never had a name. And we're living in a time when the UK government actually puts into their budget considerations an understanding of social value creation. Now, can you imagine that? We can't even get anyone in Treasury in Australia to grapple with that concept, but we're trying hard. But that shows the difference between where we are and the context in which you are operating and where the UK and the US are. Shouldn't, that doesn't mean we shouldn't aspire to make progress. And all of this together, which I'm going to show you in a minute, I think social innovation, that's where it's not just technological innovation, which we're fantastic at in this country. Remember what we're famous for? Hills hoists, <laughs> Victor lawnmowers, <laughs> wine cast bladders. <laughs> that's our claim to fame. And all of our innovation money, all of the funds, go towards technological, that's the fix. We love roads and bricks and mortar, we don't, but our governments who fund things love bricks and mortar and roads, tangible things. Whereas in fact, we're moving into a world where we do a much better job of trying to measure and account for innovations which tilt improvements and new things towards the benefit of humanity, not towards the bottom line of individual shareholders. And that's the theme running through social. It's about society, tilting the benefits towards society. It doesn't mean that it costs rather than makes an investment in the future. We live in a time where um, a critical mass of people a lot of them are young, but not only young. I'm not letting Gen Ys take all the <laughs> kudos for this, because people like me and Mohammed Yunus have been around for ages. Um, but anyway, what's different about Gen Y is they've had a look at our world and they've gone, it doesn't work very well, does it? Um, I think there might be a better way of doing things. And they've said the, the, the sharing of the planet's resources as really unbalanced and unfair. But they've said, we're not gonna rely on charity, or we're not gonna rely on the United Nations, or we're not gonna rely on World Trade Organization, and we're not going to rely even on our national governments anymore, because they haven't provided the solutions. So amazingly, these people bring in the one package um, a social passion and a sufficient level of business skills. If you want to set up a social enterprise, do you have to be a social entrepreneur yourself? Oh, let's. 
You have to be an entrepreneur? What's yeah. an entrepreneur? What characteristics? In that context, leading that business forward. More than that. Can't you just be a manager? Yeah. No, you've got to have, have some sort of creative and yeah. vision. Yeah. Creative vision. Yeah. Yeah. Passion. Aha, uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. good. Okay. So, um, you've identified some of the traits. Can you learn them? Yes. Can you learn to have vision? <laughs> Can you learn to be passionate? You have to find something. Can you learn to be determined? To be determined? <laughs> I think yes. something can bring out those traits if they're, if they're present in the first place. But they're like present. Yeah. You're saying they're yeah. present and they yeah. can be developed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're asking ourselves, do you, do you have to be the keepers of the vision? It's quite good if you can be. No, but you need someone on the team who is. You really do. Yeah. I agree. Can you just subcontract out all the other management <laughs> stuff? <laughs> And still hold on to the vision. No. That's a fundamental question for you to ask yourselves as you sit here thinking, can I start a social enterprise? The person who set up the first support group for social entrepreneurs, Ashoka, you could look at their website, A-S-H-O-K-A. There's lots of examples of social entrepreneurs and the work they do. It's a support network. He said, look, what we haven't been paying attention to is that in the last 25 to 30 years, the architecture of society has moved around us and it's the social half of society that's changing substantially and that's being led by social entrepreneurs. I just do need to say, okay, you're trying to decide whether you're a charity, whether just a bit of a social focus or whether you're a social enterprise, you have to go through a checklist. Are you, do you have a core social purpose? The absolute whole reason for which you exist. Tick. Do you use an enterprise approach? That's the enterprise part of social enterprise. Business vehicles, entrepreneurship, innovation, market approaches same things that a for-profit business would normally use. Do you have social ownership? Um, that can be just your users have a say in your board. It can be your employees own you. Um, but with a focus on public good and stewardship. The Social Enterprise Coalition says those three things. Enterprise orientation, social aims, and social ownership. And the Skull Centre, where I worked, takes a bit more of a kind of high level um, systemic approach. And it says social entrepreneurship, not the social enterprise, social entrepreneurship, the people that uh, have the inspiring vision. It's the product of individuals, organisations and networks that challenge conventional structures by addressing the failures and identifying new opportunities in the institutional arrangements that currently cause the inadequate provision or unequal distribution of social and environmental goods. And you are stuck in there. Unequal distribution. So when you're thinking about looking for money, you should make some assessment about where you fit. So if you want to grab some gift capital, which we're saying not a good idea to just rely on that forever, but that's where you go to look. But if you want debt and equity capital, then you need to look for the social investors. If you're a social business, as distinct from a social enterprise, and you want commercial finance, then you go to the mainstream finance and investment market. So what they've done in the UK is they've said, okay, if governments won't spend money, maybe we can mobilise sources of money from somewhere else. So they've <coughs> taken 3,000 short sentence inmates in one prison in the UK, it's in Peterborough, They've raised five million pounds. 
And how it works is it's a partnership between, this is one model and it's not the only model. So the Ministry of Justice and social investors and um, service providers. And what happens is they agree, they enter into a contract, they agree on um, outcomes so that if you reach a certain level of outcome, percentage of success, you'll get a payment, a, re a repayment of your loan at a certain level. So what they decided in this one is if they can reduce reoffending by seven and a half percent, the investors will get a financial return of between seven and 13 percent, depending on how well the program does. Social return on investment is not just about saying, I put one pound in and I got five pounds back. It might come out with a ratio in the end, but in fact, it's a story of the change that happens to an individual or an organisation as a result of the intervention of the program you've run. So it takes those changes. I'm going to give you a very simple example in a moment. It says, how can we arrive at a contingent value, in other words, a kind of a proxy value of the changes that have occurred? And how can we then um, do a whole lot of other um, mathematical calculations, but don't worry about that. And we arrive at a ratio of not cost-benefit, but benefit to costs. And yes, it comes down to a number, but it's the work that goes into arriving that num at that number, which is the story of change along the way, which is incredibly powerful. Could we extract some learnings from today that are applicable to your organisation and then see if we can share it? Yes. If you're going to seek social investment, all of these factors, be it that little exercise with the values, you know, my values might be slightly different to your values, etc. I think it just gives you so much homework to think about around the marketing, seeking funding, seeking investment. What else have we got from today? Yes? I think I've possibly learned heaps of things around... Um, the situation that we're in at the moment, where we're almost um, on the cusp of going out there to seek some social investment, um, and how one does that by not presuming anything about your values and the person you're going to, yes. etc., etc. So I think um, um, that can be cool, so right? many things to to streamline your marketing pitch. What else have we got? I found the um, contextual stuff very interesting, but I was very keen to get at the, the meat, you know, like what is there that I can learn for, for us in our situation here. And no, I think it's just um, a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work. I'm, I'm wondering whether it's not a lot more comfortable to say as a, as a funded training organisation mm. than to become a social venture. Well, it might be for you. Uh, it mm. might be. Nobody is saying that a social enterprise is the panacea for mm -hmm. everything, but it is saying to those who think they have an urgent need to um, restructure around income generation that it's one strong possibility. And so I think part of today is to just get a sense of readiness in thinking. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily, here's my fully fledged designed yeah. model. But you will be ahead of the curve yourselves when the opportunities come. But one thing that I did want to say, I suppose, is I feel this huge opportunity. It's not on the board there. And yeah, but I'm it put is, it on the there board. is a massive opportunity in this, particularly in an industry I think that hasn't, you know, as we're all in the disability industry, um, we haven't really embraced this, the, 
you know, the way we can. And Queensland is, I suppose, a little behind the times with um, some of the stuff. But yeah, it, I think like you're saying, you know, if we're prepared for it when it comes around, um, you know, we've forewarned and forearmed.